From KGW, this is The Good Stuff. It's this fun, relaxing, easygoing thing to do with the edge of speed, right? Well, tonight on The Good Stuff, kicking the art of puzzles into high gear with speed puzzling. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Tim Gordon. Well, tonight we introduce you to uh, the family business team that's had a bit of a wild ride. The father-son duo started with a niche business that survived near failure. Now they're bouncing back and quickly becoming Portland's next big thing. In this edition of Pacific Storyland, Catherine Cook and photographer Kurt Austin show us how they pull it all together. In Southeast Portland, you'll find the corner piece of Lane and Andrew Weatherly's sure thing. Oh yeah, we were uh, printing uh, beer coasters. You can see a couple of bars and restaurants that we have here in Portland. A father-son business um, venture. It was um, a product that we thought we could get into that would be recession proof. We need to spread the word about coronavirus and its impact. Global pandemic proof? Not so much. Who knew? And all the bars and restaurants shut down. Um, sales basically went to zero. They looked for a way to survive. We had to find something new. You know, you just, you just keep moving and you keep shaking and try to find your way, you know. And found their missing piece. Which is why we got into the puzzle business. Absolutely. The Portland Puzzle Company. Our print. Uh, all the pieces fit together great. So this is just an adhesive paper. They manufacture custom Great. jigsaw puzzles. And we work with a lot of local artists and photographers. Single print and wholesale. Make sure that it cuts evenly. A different Make kind sure. of sure thing. I think the pandemic brought a lot of people into jigsaw puzzles. The pandemic is over now. <laughs> and the real fun yeah. is just beginning. We start at 6.30. <laughs> hey, we're going to have a blast tonight. You're going to see. Come on Get ready Hi. for speed puzzling. I'm a goofball. <sighs> what are you going to say? I'm like, OK, I have to try it. This is Erin O'Shea's first time. She fits right in. It's this fun, relaxing, easygoing thing to do with the edge of speed right? and competition. Hey, guys. The Weatherly started Wednesday night speed puzzling last fall. You're checked in and ready to go. Thank you. On this night, 23 teams, four people each, I'm fast, not furious, are signed up. It's crazy. <laughs> the most yet. It is exciting. Admission is 30 bucks a team. It's a good night. They all get the same puzzle, which they can keep. I've been enjoying it. First place is 100 bucks. I mean, I guess if you want to win, you want to be fast. There is no prize for best team name. Uh, separation anxiety. But there should be. The jig is up. Oh, there's so many people who are like incredibly fast. That includes Rose Robbins. She and her mom, Leah. So I'm typically a sorter. Are queens of pieces. Yeah. They've won a couple times. It feels very Portland. It's very organic. Let's get going. Let's count it down from three, two, one, let's go. It's like Twister. Everybody's trying to, you know, work uh, on top of each other and through each other. Going well? Uh, yeah. Queens of Pieces is off to a good start. We basically just do what we do until we hear someone shout, woohoo! Oh, there it goes. In the back corner is Blem. <laughs> These guys are fantastic. It's our initials. Beatrice, Larissa, Aaron, and Mary. They're the team that beat. I've been looking for that. As the puzzlers puzzle, see that I needed this to go into that. <laughs> the curious drop in. Yeah, even if you're not the best, even if you're not trying to win, it just looks like a good time. I also didn't know we had a puzzle making company here in Portland. I mean, how great is that? Pretty great. Oh yeah. If you're Andrew and Lane. Yeah, buddy. Remember, they never planned okay. on any of this. Oh We're working so hard. The thing that brought them together after it tore them all apart. It is strange that this, that was four years ago. Huh. We got a donut over here. About 38 minutes in, the winners emerge. Damn it. Oh my God. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. 
It's Blem in first. I don't really have a strategy. Done. Wow. Followed seconds later <laughs> by Queens of Pieces. <laughs> It was awfully close. Got the first place and second place team separated by 12 and a half seconds. Wow. Yay, look at this beautiful puzzle. And these <laughs> guys are fantastic. Close race this time. That's a little too close. Yeah. Gotta get better. For Glam. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta <laughs> practice more, you guys, like right now. <laughs> Unlike Puzzle World. We just do it, I don't know. Yeah. Life, as we know, doesn't always come with reference art. Everybody says, well, that's just a piece of the puzzle. But you never know. It might look pretty good. <laughs> oh, yeah. When it's done. It was amazing. In Southeast Portland. <laughs> Definitely be back. Catherine Cook. <laughs> I'm sweating bucket. KGW News. So it's an athletic event. <laughs> yeah. That was awesome. I'd say it looks pretty good when they're done. Oh, by the way, they're still making beer coasters and orders are finally picking up again. Well, if you have an idea for Catherine's Pacific Storyland series, she would love to hear from you. You can text Catherine at 503-226-5088 or you can send an email if you prefer to Pacific Storyland at KGW.com. Well, Catherine's story made us curious about what types of hobbies you spend your time with. So we asked you to share a photo on Facebook. Let's take a look at a few of those that came in for us. Nancy shared this gorgeous acrylic painting with us. She called it Night Owl. Wow, that's really nice. I love the use of the colors there. Really good. And Ann says her hobbies are hiking and photography, and she captured them both perfectly with this picture, don't you think? Definitely a Pacific Northwest hobby combo, if there ever was one. And Thea sent in some wildlife photography they submitted for the World Photographic Cup and it looks like they'll be representing U.S. Very nice job with that shot. Two eagles in flight and in fight. And finally, Dan sent us this picture of him panning for some gold. Hey, wish you the best of luck on your search, Dan. Hope you pan some up. Well, you can share your photos and stories of good stuff happening in your community by texting us at that number we mentioned just a second ago, 503-226-5088, or email us at thegoodstuff at kgw.com. Well, a pair of young filmmakers from Eugene are taking their hobby to the next level. The two are preparing to screen their movie, The Boy Who Never Tangoed, in early April at the Eugene Art House Theater. They finished the film just days before graduating high school last year. That's amazing. Since then, it's been screened at multiple film festivals, and it's actually won several awards. I think once making this movie and, and seeing that, you know, against all odds, we were able to pull it off, um, I think definitely certified the idea that this is a, a life passion, you know? This is all I want to do, Yeah, is just make films like this, and the fact that we've already made one is amazing. Another amazing thing, it cost them just under $2,000 to make. That's a good deal. They hope they can inspire others to pursue their dreams, no matter how unlikely they may seem. Well, stay with us because after the break, we're taking you to a facility that is taking a less traditional approach to mental health. More on Little Bit Horse Riding Therapy. That's after the break.
Welcome back. A new research grant will allow a local doctoral candidate to look into a new method to help teens fight drug abuse and addiction. Lauren Burney is looking into what are called recovery high schools. They provide support to students while also providing them an education. Recent studies followed hundreds of adolescents after treatment. They either went to a recovery school or back to traditional schools. We know that there is um, a positive effect of recovery high schools. If they do end up using substances, it's to a much um, a less frequent um, amount. The two-year grant from the National Institute on Drug Abuse will allow Bernie to expand her research and learn what makes the school so successful. She says this could be a turning point in helping kids that struggle. Well, next we're taking you out to a place in Redmond, Washington. It's helping people using horses. One of their smallest clients made a special friendship with an equally small horse. This is really a wonderful story. And Kim Holcomb from our sister station in Seattle has it. Who's that? This little horse is helping this little girl learn how to speak. Pick up Pete. He's up. Yeah. At Little Bit Therapeutic Riding Center, a place where people with disabilities can reach their full potential using horsepower. Let's go. Ah, <laughs> it's a little squeaks today. Devin Kubot is a speech and language pathologist at Little Bit who works with Celeste. Oh no! Oh no! Oh good speech. Celeste is two years old. She is autistic, so she was diagnosed with autism and she was not speaking very much. So her mom brought her here and we're so glad she did. She is adorable and she loves horses. So this is a really, really great place for her to be for therapy because it's such a fun environment for her. 30% of Little Bit's clients are people with autism, according to Little Bit's executive director. Oh, there's so many reasons why it works. There's a little bit of little bit magic, but there's some really great science around um, the impacts. Even sitting on a pretend horse connects the mind and the body. That's why Celeste's sessions often begin like this. But the real horse turns learning <laughs> into sheer delight. For a kiddo like Celeste, it's such a motivating environment. This is fun, this is different than a traditional therapy setting. The horses are alive, they're interacting with us, so they're biofeedback. Celeste doesn't ride Pete, but she does communicate with him. And Pete understands. That helps Celeste reach out to others. Say hi, Mama. She'll do things like reach up to hold Devin's hand. That's a social interaction play with somebody else of communication in our body language and before she wasn't doing those things. First words and first steps often happen a little bit. That day, Celeste's mom was asking her to say thank you and Celeste said the words thank you for the first time and we all got to hear it. It was just, it was wonderful. And that was very exciting. Mom was like, I've never heard her say that before. At the end of this session, Pete gets a treat, carefully delivered on a tray for safety. <laughs> He's eating. He's eating, yes. And the little girl who came here with very few words couldn't communicate her joy any more clearly. Thank you, Pete. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> Good job. As a mom, what I've gotten from Little Bit is that peace, that, that feeling of knowing that she's going to be okay. <laughs> that is sweet. Well, from horses to dogs now is a Bend Area Mobile Dog Gym is helping owners keep their dogs fit and healthy. Look at them go on the treadmill there. C-Spot Run Mobile aims to help keep a good workout schedule for dogs without having to worry about the weather or your schedule. The company brings the gym to people's homes or work. The climate control van features treadmills and air filters to keep pups going even amidst wildfire smoke. The owner says they hope to buy a second van and hire some new employees by winter time. That's awesome. Well, coming up on The Good Stuff, the Olympic opening ceremony is just a few months away now, but the festivities are already in full swing, swing I should say, or full run there. A look at unique competitions going on for waiters in France when we come back.
Well, the countdown continues. The opening ceremony for the Paris 2024 Olympics is just four months away now. If you appreciate fast service when you go to eat, Paris has just a competition for you right now. NBC's Stephanie Gosk explains. This summer in Paris, the fastest athletes in the world will win Olympic gold and maybe break world records. <laughs> Which is not exactly what was happening Sunday on the streets of the French capital. But nonetheless, the spirit of competition was in the air. 200 waiters from cafes across the city raced 1.2 miles in uniform, carrying trays with water, an espresso cup, and a croissant, or as the locals call it, a croissant. The rules were simple. No running, only one hand can carry the tray, and the water can't spill. No one wants a soggy croissant. I don't necessarily expect to be first, this waitress says. I don't have the best cardio. The Paris mayor launched the race, calling the French bistro a way of life. And the race has honored it for over a century. Waiters facing off since 1914. Some years carrying wine instead of water, speed walking through the storied streets. In 1929, these two got creative, if also a bit reckless. In recent years, a lack of sponsorship put the race on hold. But with the city's support, it was back. At the end, the winner broke the tape in victory and crumbled in exhaustion. The throngs of Olympic coffee drinkers won't descend upon the city for a few months. Plenty of time to work on that cardio. Stephanie Gosk, NBC News. And while the Olympics may be four months out, single-day tickets for the U.S. Olympic track and field trials, hey, they go on sale tomorrow at noon. The competition, which serves as the qualifying event to select Team USA, will be held at the University of Oregon's wonderful, famed, and new, now, Hayward Field, June 21st through the 30th. Down there in Eugene, you can head to GoTrackTownUSA.com to grab those tickets up. They start at just $25. That is a great event in Eugene for sure. And stick around because we've got a whole list of events around the area to keep you busy this coming weekend. A look at some of your options coming up right after the break. But first, we do want to let you know it is the last week of the KGW Great Food Drive. You can donate online at kgw.com slash food drive. And again, we want to thank all of you who donated so far, as well as Rivermark Credit Union, Pacific Office Automation, Safeway, and your local Toyota dealers for making this year's drive a huge success. We'll be right back.
first look ahead to the weekend now, which, believe it or not, is expected to be mostly sunny. Easter falls on Sunday, and there are several other activities you might want to check out. We start at the Grotto, where they are holding Easter Sunday Mass a couple times on Sunday. It's free for anyone to attend, with Mass at 8 a.m., 10, noon, and a special Easter service at 6.30 p.m. Well, if you're looking for something a bit more up-tempo, you might want to check out the Mount Hood Meadows Spring Brew Fest. It's this Saturday from noon to four, and it features seven local breweries. All right, there'll also be live music and raffles up there. It's $17 in advance and 19 bucks a day of, with a more expensive package that includes a buffet as well. And if you're hunting for something with a little sparkle, the Hillsboro Gem Fair is happening all weekend long, starting this Friday at the Westside Commons. There's going to be booths selling, uh, booths selling jewelry and stones from a variety of places and cultures as well. Admission for that is $7. And Reed College is hosting a zine fest this Saturday as well. This will be the first of its kind for Reed College and will feature keynote speaker James Spooner, a director and graphic novelist. Zine is short for magazine, by the way. The event runs from 11 until 4, and it is completely free, so go on out to read for that. And finally, Clowns Without Borders is returning to Portland this Saturday. It's a nonprofit whose leaders say they use live performances to bring joy and connection to communities. They're going to be performing two shows. There's going to be a 2 p.m. matinee and a 7 o'clock evening show as well. For more weekend inspiration, check out the 8 Things to Do article up each week on KGW.com. Well, that is all the time we have tonight. Thanks so much for making a little time for the good stuff. Now, before we go, we're going to leave you with a few, we're going to leave you with a few more of your wonderful hobby photos there. Starting with a cat and puzzles. It's pretty good. Have a great night, everybody. I'm Tim Gordon with a look ahead to the weekend. Sorry, I forgot there's a stinger. I'm Tim Gordon with a look ahead to the weekend now. Easter falls on Sunday, and there are several other activities you might want to be checking out as well. We'll start at the Grotto, where they are holding Easter Sunday Mass a couple times on Sunday. It's free for anyone to attend with a Mass at 8 a.m., 10, noon, and a special Easter service at 6.30 p.m. Well, if you're looking for something a bit more up-tempo, you might want to check out the Mount Hood Meadows Spring Brew Fest. It's this Saturday from noon to four and features seven local breweries. There will also be live music and raffles there. It's $17 in advance and 19 bucks a day of with a more expensive package that includes a buffet as well. Well, if you're hunting for something with a little sparkle, the Hillsborough Gem Fair is happening all weekend long, starting this Friday at the Westside Commons. There will be booths that are selling jewelry and stones from a variety of places and cultures. Admission to that is $7.
And Reed College is hosting a, a zine fest this Saturday as well. This will be the first of its kind for Reed College and will feature keynote speaker James Spooner, a director and graphic novelist. Zine is short for magazine, by the way. The event runs from 11 until 4 and is completely free. So head on up to Reed for that. And finally, Clowns Without Borders is returning to Portland this Saturday. It is a nonprofit.